Hello everyone. This is Dr. Asif from the Department of Geography, Jamia Millia Islamia. I am working here as assistant professor. Dear students, today we are going to talk about the basic concept of geographical information system. In this module, we will discuss about the basic component of geographical information system. We will also discuss how these basic components of geographical information system are interrelated and connected with each other and how geographical information will work. In this model, in this module, we try to give you a basic understanding about the working of geographical information system. So let's see what is geographical information system. Basically, we will talk about the basic concept of geographical information system. As you know, geographical information system is consisting of three words. That is geographical, information and system. Geograph the G of geographical stands for the relief features or the features found on the surface of Earth in relation to each other. I stands for the information about these special attributes or about these, uh, about these things on the surface of Earth. And S stands for system. System, system means the hardware and the software system of which is used in GIS. So we talk about the geographical information system in this manner. As you all know that the development of this discipline is not an old concept. It is not, it is a recent concept and basically it developed with the technological development rather than with the development of theor theoretical development. The GIS developed by the Canadian scholar known as Roger Timlinson in 1963. He was the first scholar who established the Canadian geographical information system when he was working for the Canada Land Inventory. After the Roger Timlinson, it was developed by the Howard Lab or Harvard University and they have developed a geographical information system lab in 1985. Basically, the journey of the development of geographical information system is very interesting and it passed through the various phases. You all know that the development of geographical information system can be divided into four basic category, into four basic phases. The initial phase of geographical information, uh, development of geographical information system can be consisting with the individual uses of geographical information system. There were few individuals during the era of 1960s which were using this technology for analyzing the spatial data found on the surface of Earth. But after that, in phase two, government organization started using geographical information system for various purposes. In phase three, it was used on the commercial basis. Few commercial companies came into existence and they used, they started using geographical information system for commercial purposes, for identifying the basic informations, for identifying the different objects on the surface of earth and for their interrelations and interdependence. So in the phase third, co commercial use of geographical information system has been started by the various private and various government companies. So it has been, it was an interesting phase of development in phase three. But when we talk about the phase four, phase four is more related to the development of different softwares of GIS. With the passage of time, we have started the development of better GIS software. Like in, in the first phase, we developed the Arc GIS, but later on, we developed the Arc View, and that play a vital role in the development of geographical information system. So these four phases were very interesting when we talk about the development of geographical information system. Now, I would like to explain you how geographical, uh, geographical information system work, how it is related with the spatial data distributed on the surface of Earth. Basically, the most interesting part of GIS is related to the development of various kinds of maps. Through the information, through the data, we developed various kinds of ma maps and these maps are very authentic and these maps are very much advanced. Even we are able to produce the three-dimensional maps on the basis of geographical information system. 
this geographical information system is nothing but it is a computer based pro programming it is a computer based programming in which we store the data we store rather i can say we store the special data in which we analyze the special data in which we manage the special data and in which we try to correlate the special data with other things so geographical information system is related to the uh, to the analysis of special and non special data in the later part of this module i will try to explain you what is special data and what is non special data gis has the ability to correlate the special data and the non special data gis is basically computer based programming in modern era you all know that we have increased the use of computer in almost every sphere of life computer gives us the better analysis opportunity computer gives us the better understanding and it is helpful in formulating the planning for the different regions for the future purposes when we talk about the gis data or when we talk about the gis it is related to the creation analysis of the special data and it is related to the uh, to the restoration of the information related to the special attributes found on the surface of earth gis data can be viewed in three different ways as follows number 1 database view in which we try to uh, uh, to, uh, to identify the data in a tabular form and tabular form data can be stored in gis and it can be correlated with the special data number 2 it can be viewed in web map form map is the ultimate result of the geographical information system analysis it, through the map we can visualize the information it is very much helpful not only in visualizing the information but with the help of the map we can also uh, 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 compare the information of different time periods third is layer view layer view is just like we can create different types of layers with the help of the geographical information system you all know about the topo sheets in topo sheets we store all the information on a single topo sheets but in gis we can create several layers about the information several information can be placed at different layers of gis say for example when i say that the information about the temperature data of a particular region can be stored in a different layer and the information about the pressure of a particular region can be stored in a different layer so we are having the layering system in which new layers can be identified can be analyzed with the help of the old layers so this is very unique features of the geographical information system with the help of the geographical information system we can identify several uh, several types of utilities several types of services found in a particular region say for example we want to identify the availability of the hostel, ho hospitals or the concentration of the hospitals in a particular region so if we will map the uh, the data in gis environment on the basis of the map we are able to identify the hospital services the areas which are having the better hospital services the areas which are having the minimum hospital services can be identified with the help of the analysis of gis data through the maps when we talk about the mapping through the gis two things are very important these two things are number one scale which is very important you all know what is scale scale is the relationship or the ratio in between the distance shown on the map and the actual distance shown on the ground surface so it is the ratio in between these two distances when we talk about the projection projection is a method through which we drive three dimensional earth surface features on a two dimensional plane paper so these two important thing one is scale and second is projection are very paramount when we map through the gis data and when we map the, the data into gis environment there are few famous scholars who try to define the geographical information system these definitions i would like to tell you within the codes Bru in 1986 try to define GIS as within inverted commas GIS is a powerful set of tools for storing and retrieving at will transforming and displaying special data for the real world and for a particular sets of purposes 
A geographical information system is a special case of information system where the database consists of observations on specially distributed features, activities or events which are definable in space as point, lines or areas. A geographical information system manipulates data about these points, line and areas to retrieve data for ad hoc queries and analysis. This definition was given by Duker in 1979. There was one more scholar known as Muguer. In 1991, he defines GIS in the following manner. He gives several points about the definition of GIS. In the first point, he pointed out that process function oriented, emphasis, emphasizing the information handling capabilities of GIS. For example, storage, retrieval, manipulation and display of geographical data. Second point he pointed out about the applications. Application divides information system according to the problems they seek to address. For example, soil, land and planning information system. Third is toolbox. Emphasizes the generic aspect of GIS as a toolbox to manipulate special data. And the fourth point is database regards GIS as a database system reflecting the influence of database theory and practice on GIS. So on the basis of the definitions I have given to you, we can say that geographical information system is a software in which we can store the data, rather I can say we can store the special data and we can manage the special data, we can analyze the special data and also we can formulate the policies and we can formulate the uh, planning on the basis of the uh, data analyzed in GIS environment. GIS gives us a tool it, through which we can make plannings for the development of a particular region. GIS gives instantaneous answer of several complex problems. It helps us in identifying the problems and on the basis of the identification of the problems, we can easily understand these problems and can make our planning accordingly. GIS works on two basic concepts. It works on the geographical coordinate system number one, but it also work on the on the implicit information system like about the uh, addresses of different areas, addresses of name of a road or like uh, name of a building or a hospital. So it can also works with the help of the implicit data. It works in two ways on the basis of explicit data that is the referencing system and on the basis of the implicit data that is the address of a particular location or area. Now after going through the detailed discussion about the GIS, GIS I would like to talk about the workflow of GIS. When we talk about the workflow of GIS it means how GIS works, how GIS integrate the special and non-information data, how GIS assess these data and how we can process these data and can identify these data on the basis of the maps prepared on, with the help of the GIS data. So GIS, GIS workflow depends on these important components which I will describe now. The first and the foremost important component of GIS flow is the user. User can be divided into two important parts. One, those people who are developing the software of the GIS, who are working behind the window, who are working behind the scene. So these people are developing the softwares of the GIS and it can also be divided into second important user in which people like you and me are an important part because we are using these software on the basis of our necessity. Academician is using GIS software for the purpose of teaching, if engineer is using GIS software, civil engineer is using GIS software for the purpose of the construction of building. Similarly, a geologist is using GIS software on the basis of his or her requirements. After user, it is the information or the data which is very important when we talk about the geographical information system. Information or the data can be divided into two important segment. One is special data and second is non-special data or tabular data. When we talk about the special data, special data is about the attributes distributed on the surface of the earth. 
you can take an example of a special data a map or a topo sheet can be an example of a special data because all the information is available in the map all the information is available on a topo sheet so this, this can be attributed as an example of a special data when we talk about the non special data it is about the uh, distribution of the phenomena in tabular form say for example we want to study the population of a particular region then the population is being written in tabular form we want to study the sex ratio of a particular region then the sex ratio may be written in a tabular form we want to analyze the literacy rate of a particular region then literacy rate will be there in a tabular form so there is a huge difference in between the special and non special data and that forms the second important component of geographical information system the third is methodology and the procedure methodology meaning thereby how we are assessing the data in gis environment it starts with the storage of gi special data in gis environment then tabulation of the data and the connection of the special and non special data analysis of the data and the final output of the data so with the help of the methodology or with the help of the procedure which we adopt to analyze the data we are able to get the final information now i would like to talk about the hardware or rather i can say the computer hardware which is required for the geographical information system a computer is the basic necessity to work on a gis software without computer you cannot go you cannot work on a gis software so this computer is known as hardware and the programs which are there in the computer are known as software there are the few important components of hardware which i would like to discuss with you the first and the foremost important components of hardware is visible display unit or we can say monitor monitor is a is a thing like a tv set on this monitor we get the information what we are processing through the computer so monitor is the first and the foremost important as far as the hardware or the computer hardware is concerned for the gis after monitor it is the keyboard which is also very important part of computer through the keyboard we gives command to the computer and after keyboard it is mouse which is also very important through the mouse we drag the things we uh, zoom out the things we zoom in the things and with the help of the mouse we are able to operate the computer in a better manner after mouse it is cpu central processing unit which is very important when we talk about the computer hardware cpu cpu works like a brain of the computer it gives command to the computer and whole the computer system is dependent on central processing unit it works as a mind of the computer or as an integral and important part of the computer a scanner is the next next important thing when we talk about the computer a scanner scans the thing on the basis of the scanned thing we are able to use the uh, sheets or we use the uh, say for example we scan the topo sheets so on the basis of the scanner we can scan it and when it this topo sheet is being display on a monitor screen screen it can be used it can be manipulate it can be changed it can be geo referenced then printer is also very important for a computer hardware printer when we prepare the maps so we need the soft cop hard copy of the map for various purposes by giving the command in the printer of these maps we can get the hard copy so printer is also very important next is the internet connection internet connection is also very necessary when we want to work in gis environment so these were the important hardwares these were the important computer hardwares which were required when we want to work in gis environment after the hardware software is also an important part of gis programming software play a vital role as far as the geographical information is concerned there are two type of software one is system software which is the command within the system for example dos 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 was a system software and windows you all are aware about the windows windows is also known as a system software it is basically the commands it is basically the direction to the computers on the basis of these directions computer works but there is another kind of software they are program specific software like 
GIS software, like Arc software or Ilvis, these software or GeoMedia, these softwares are designed for a specific purpose to get the specific information. In our case, we are talking about the analysis and the process of geographical information system or the data which we get through the geographical information system. So, with the help of these software like ArcGIS, ArcView, Elvis, Map Info, we are able to analyze the data which we get through different sources like through the satellites or through the GPS in GIS environment. After software and hardware discussion, I would like to tell you about the important components of GIS. You are looking at this image. This image is showing several things in which image processing system is there, a statistical analysis system is there, database management system is there, cartographic display system is there, geographic analysis system is there, map digitization system is there. All, all these systems in GIS environment work together in order to get the final information. Say for example, here we are having an important con component known as map, map digitization system. In this system, we digitize the map, we try to digitize the map for our use for the higher use of that map. Like another way we are having a statistical analysis system. We are having several toolbox in GIS software through which we can analyze statistically any data which is present in GIS portal. After that, we are having the cartographic display system. With the help of this cartographic display system, we are able to display any information which we want to display on a computer or which we want to display through a hard copy. So, in this way, these are the several components of GIS. After passing through all these components, we get the final result, we get the final information. After this image, there is a diagram in which I have written it as GIS workflow diagram. Look at this guy, diagram, we are having the GIS in the middle and the, all the components of the GIS are being distributed towards the different areas of this middle, middle GIS. We are having the hardware, I have already discussed with you hardware, what are the hardware requirements for the GIS, we are having the software, I have already discussed with you the two, two kind of softwares, we are having the program software and also we are having the problem specific software. So, these are the two important software which we require. Then, then we are having the data. Data is the first and the foremost requirement to work in a GIS environment. Data is very important, it can be special data, it can be a non-special data, depending upon the nature of the study which we want to go through. Data, uh, if I want to give you an example of data, then a satellite image can be an example of data, aerial photograph can be an example of a data or the non-special data in tabular form can be an example of a data. Then we are having the methods. There are several methods through which we can go, we can analyze the data which we get through the different sources. So, by analyzing through different methods, by analyzing the data through different methods, we are able to get the information. And the last and the four most important component where it is written at the top is the pupil component. I have already discussed with you that there are two kind of the pupil which are involved in geographical information system. One, the, the programmer or the, the, the person who are developing the software of the GIS and the second is the pupil like you and like me who are using this software for our own purposes. So, we have discussed with you about the different components of GIS. The one of the most important thing which most of the geographers or most of the planners ignore till the era of 1980 and 1990 is the errors in GIS. That is very important aspect of geographical information system. Initially, after the development of GIS in 60s, 70s and 80s, we do not bother about different kinds of errors produced in GIS data handling. These errors can be very harmful for our information and for our results which we derive through the GIS environment. But initially, people do not pay proper attention to these errors. But after 1990, people started, started paying attention to these errors because if errors are there in the GIS data, errors are there in the manipulation of the GIS data, then definitely we will get the wrong information and if we will get the wrong information, we will not be able to execute it properly. 
So, in the modern era, we are concerned about the errors which takes place in GIS environment. You all know about a saying, garbage in, garbage out. It applies in GIS data very accurately. If we will put wrong data in the GIS environment, then definitely we will not able to get anything from the GIS data. So, we need to key, uh, analyze, we need to identify the quality, sorry, we need to understand the quality of the data, data. The importance of the quality of the data is need to be understand in a proper, a proper and comprehensive manner. When we talk about the errors in GIS environment, these errors takes place at different stages of GIS data handling and GIS manu data manipulation. They can be di divided into number one, pre-processing errors. Before we started working in GIS environment, we have the data in GIS storage. These errors, may be, there may be errors in that particular data before the starting working on GIS environment. If errors are there, then it will be very difficult for us to process, to move forward. These errors can be of different types. Number one, we talk about the data reliability. Data reliability decreases with increasing time in between the gap of the data collection and the use of the data. You need to understand this, this thing. Suppose I collected data today, but I am using this data after two years or after three years, then the reliability of the data will not be there. Then the information in the data will not be as accurate as they are today. So, there should not be a big gap in between the collection of the data and in between the use and analysis of the data. Number two, when we select the scale, scale is very important when we talk about the information, when we talk about the processing of data in GIS environment. Because if the data, the soft copy of the data is of having a different scale. So, for example, we are having an image of a different scale, but we do not put the same scale in the final processing, then definitely all the information will get altered. Then density of data. Density of data is also very important. Data should be dense in order to get the better result. Thick data cannot produce the better results. Dense data is able to produce good results when we work it in the GIS environment. Next is seamless data. It means all the data which we are using should be in the same unit and should be on the same projection. What I am saying that if the data is in 1000 tons, then all the data should be in 1000 tons and if we are using the universal transfers marketers projection, then all the data should have been used in this particular kind of projection. So, there should not be any change in the projection and there should not be any change in the unit. Last pre-processing error may be inaccuracy of the ta tabular data. We are having the data in tabular form. Suppose we are having the population data of a particular region. Say for example, we are having the population data of different districts of India. Then we need to be very careful when we are placing this data in GIS environment. Suppose the density of population of a district is A is being placed in the density of the population of district B, then that whole data will be altered. So, we need to be very much careful when we place the data or particularly the tabular data in GIS environment. Then after pre-processing errors, we are also having the errors at the time of processing. When we process the information, when we process the data, so there are several things which need to be carefully examined, which need to be carefully analyzed and these things are number one, numerical errors should not be there. When we talk about the data and we are processing the data, we are using the keyboard and we are using the key mouse, then we should keep in mind that any numerical error should not be there. If there is an error, then the information will not be correctly manipulated, will not be correctly analyzed. Then error at the time of digitization. This is also very important. We need to keep in mind when we are digitizing the map, we are digitizing the information, there should not be any overshoot or there should not be any undershoot. Overshoot means we are exaggerating the limit of that particular area, we are exaggerating the limit of the boundary of that particular area and undershoot means we are reducing the limit of it. So, there should not be any overshoot, there should not be any undershoot. Third and the last is data manipulation errors. 
this is the last stage in which we try to convert the vector data into the raster form, we try to convert the spatial data into non-spatial data and vice versa. There are several errors which occurs during this stage of development. So, we need to keep in mind that we should remain error free when we try to analyze the data, when we try to manipulate the data and we try to assess the information. So, these errors play a vital role in distorting the information. So, we this is very important component of the basic concept of GIS when we talk about the GIS errors. So, in this module, we try to go on through the basic concept of geographical information system. I told you about the different definitions of geographical information system, then I try to tell you in simple words what is geographical information system. Students, this geographical information system is very valuable tool, is very important tool as far as the analysis of information is concerned. But remember one thing, treat, treat this geographical information system as a vital tool, not as a discipline itself. We have gone through the different components of geographical information system in the form of hardware, in the form of software. We have also gone through the different important aspect and data analysis of geographical information system. How we analyze the data in geographical environment, how we get the data in geographical environment and how we process the data in geographical environment. In the last of this module, I try to tell you about the errors which occurs in geographical uh, GIS. These errors occur at different stages. I explained you different where these errors occur. I explained you where these errors occur, how these errors occur and how we can rectify these errors. We need to keep these errors very much in mind when we talk about the geographical information system. When we talk about the data analysis, data processing in a GIS environment. I do hope that with the help of this module, you will be able to understand the basic concept of geographical information. The purpose of this module was only to make aware about the basic components, about the basic concept of geographical information system. Thank you. Thank you very much.